this year's NFL draft has lowest number of early entrants since 2011. That trend figures to Conton. The lure of starting a pro career early apparently isn't quite as tempting for underclassmen now as it was in the days before college stars could profit off their name, image, and likeness. This month's draft features 58 early entrants, the lowest number of players to enter the draft with college eligibility remaining since 2011. That includes 54 underclassmen who were granted special eligibility by the NFL and four others, Miami defensive back Cameron Kinchins, Alabama defensive back Kool-Aid McKinstry, Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy and Clemson running back Will Shipley, who earned their degrees in three years. That represents a dramatic shift, considering at least 100 underclassmen entered the draft every year from 2016 to 2022. The 2021 draft had a record 100 underclassmen selected. I wouldn't be surprised if those numbers drop even more next year, Detroit Lions general manager Brad Holmes said. The nil policy change for college athletes took effect in the summer of 2021. The next year, 100 underclassmen entered the draft, down from 128 the previous year. That number dropped to 82 last year and tumbled again this year. Some of these guys that are out now didn't come out a year ago because they were enticed to go back for nil money, Buffalo Bills general manager Brandon Bean said. Those nil opportunities didn't sway every underclassman who was thinking of leaving school early. Wisconsin running back Brelon Allen had arrived on campus planning to turn pro after three seasons. He said at Wisconsin's Pro Day event that nil possibilities gave him zero reason to rethink that plan but it did play a role for other players such as Michigan offensive lineman Zach Zinter, who didn't enter last year's draft and instead stayed for his senior season and helped the Wolverines win a national title. It's good to not worry about stuff money-wise while you're here playing ball and to get paid to do what you love, Zinter said. Nothing crazy, but it just definitely was a factor we talked about. The fallout from the lack of underclassmen won't be evident early in the draft. The first round traditionally is heavy on early entries, and that isn't likely to change this year. The latest Associated Press mock draft has underclassmen getting selected with 19 of the 32 first round picks, including 8 of the top 10 selections. 25 of the 30 top 10 selections over the last three drafts have been early entrants. The question is whether the lack of underclassmen will limit teams' choices when they get into the later rounds. I still think there's more depth at some positions than others but I think there's going to be a good pool," Bean said. I don't see right now, like all of a sudden you get to a certain round on day 3 and you're like, you know, there's nothing to pick from. While this draft doesn't have as many younger prospects as usual, it does have more rookies approaching their mid-20s than normal, continuing a trend that started well before this year. The NCAA granted players who were in college during the pandemic-shortened 2020 season the opportunity for an extra year of eligibility. The age of the players who capitalized on that throws a wrinkle into the evaluation process. We don't really go into looking as a vacuum, so let's take age specifically, Cleveland Browns general manager Andrew Berry said. It's not like, okay, hey. If you're X years old you're off the board or we're not going to consider you. Really we do try and take each player individually and consider all the circumstances, risk factors, things that make that prospect unique and ultimately place a value on that individual from there. The impact is most obvious at the quarterback position. For instance, Green Bay Packers quarterback and 2023 fifth round pick Sean Clifford was 25 when he began his first NFL training camp. Clifford is actually three and a half months older than Packers starter Jordan Love, who was drafted three years earlier. Notre Dame Sam Hartman, a possible late round pick, will be 25 when the NFL season starts. Oregon's Bo Nix and Tennessee's Joe Milton are both 24. Washington's Michael Penix Jr. and Florida State's Jordan Travis turn 24 next month. But there are some unusually older draft prospects at other positions as well. Minnesota tight end Brevin Spanford and Florida State defensive lineman Braden Fisk are both 24.
Fisk said he has pitched his maturity as an asset when he has spoken to NFL teams. I treat it like a pro and that's how it's going to be when I get to the next level, said Fisk, who spent five seasons at Western Michigan before transferring to Florida State. There's not going to be any questions of can I handle the pressures at the next level. There's not going to be any questions of can I handle the long days, the film, everything that goes into it. This is something I've been doing for a long time, and I've been able to handle it up to this point, and I think I'm ready to play at a high level and continue the success. Future drafts eventually will stop having those older prospects as the college players who were on campus during the pandemic finally exhaust their eligibility. But the shortage of underclassmen figures to be something NFL teams will have to continue dealing with as long as nil remains a factor. That drop in numbers, is, not a surprise, Holmes said. And I don't really foresee it changing anytime soon. Underscore underscore underscore. AP Sports writers Larry Lage and Michael Marot contributed to this report. Underscore underscore underscore. Steve McArgy. I've been in the state of Missouri going on seven years now. So it definitely feels like home. Montreal, AP. The Detroit Red Wings were knocked out of playoff contention once again on Tuesday night, and it hardly could have come in more gut-wrenching fashion. Patrick Kane scored the shootout winner in a 5-4 Detroit win over the Montreal Canadiens in their regular season finale, completing a comeback after a dramatic game-tying goal from David Perron with 3.3 seconds left in regulation. But it didn't matter. The Red Wings entered the night tied with Washington for the East's second wild. In Raleigh, I'm Peyton Wilson, the NFL prospect out of NC State said. But when we go back to Hillsboro, I'm Briz Wilson's little brother. The newswoman said that Donald Trump's voter base is motivated by class resentment and anti-intellectualism the post Piers Morgan tells Katie Couric to put a sock in it after make a smear campaign video appeared first on the wrap. An opportunity for thunderstorms will push back into southern Ontario Wednesday, with a potential for some to reach severe limits in parts of the region. Nashville, 10. AP, Barry Trotz never put a label on whether he was rebuilding, retooling or simply trying to reset the Nashville Predators during his first season as general manager. Revival might be the best word to describe what he has done. Not only has Trotz helped the Predators reclaim their Smashville identity, Nashville is back in the NHL playoffs a year after the franchise missed the postseason for the first time since the 2013-14 season. That was Trotz's last year as the only he. Vancouver head coach Rick Tickett wanted to get his star goalie ample work in his return from injury. Or at least that's what he told reporters after Thatcher Demko backstopped the Vancouver Canucks to a decisive 4-1 win over the Calgary Flames on Tuesday. I thought he played great. Ticket said after Demko stopped 39 shots in his first game since March 9. That was the plan to let him get a lot of work tonight. The coach waited a beat, surveying the faces assembled in front of him, then SM. Vancouver The Vancouver Canucks have won their division for the first time in more than a decade. And while they have higher ambitions for the postseason, the players know the feat is a major one. It's cool, said forward JT. Miller. A couple years ago here, it felt like time was sitting still for the team. Lots of turnover, lots of new faces from up top to here, in the locker room. Right now it feels good. We have a lot of reasons to be proud right now about how far we've come. And I fe. Ottawa with a variety of fiscal and policy measures announced in the federal budget, here's a look at some of the winners and losers, winner, Small businesses carbon tax rebates for small businesses are coming, five years after consumers began receiving their share. The measure is a big relief, said Dan Kelly of the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses, which represents the sector. The budget says as many as 600,000 small firms would be eligible for a share of $2.5 billion. Loser Scotty Scheffler rocked the green jacket at a Dallas dive bar after getting home on Sunday night. 
Chinese runner He Ji's victory in Sunday in the Beijing Half Marathon is facing a probe after his win was called into question by Chinese internet users because a trio of African runners appeared to deliberately slow down to let him win. This wasn't the kind of attention Rory McIlroy was hoping for on the day after the Masters. A London financial paper, City AM, cited anonymous sources as saying McElroy was believed to be close to an $850 million deal to join Live Golf. McElroy was able to shut it down when he arrived at the RBC Heritage. Take a look at the new uniforms the Jets will be wearing next season. Sunrise, FLA. The Toronto Maple Leafs will face a familiar foe in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's just not the opponent they expected. The Leafs are set to meet the Boston Bruins in the opening round after Tuesday's 5-2 loss to the Panthers settled the Atlantic Division standings. Florida jumped over Boston to grab the number one seed thanks to the victory coupled with the Bruins' 3-1 loss to the Ottawa Senators on home ice in their regular season finale. It'll be a real challenge, but obviously re. England rugby star Mike Tyndall married Princess Anne's daughter Zara Tyndall in 2011, but he admitted it wasn't all fine and dandy. Scott Haraguchi documented the assault on his vessel and offers a theory as to why the shark became aggressive. The race for the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference is tight. How the NHL's tiebreaker procedure could determine who gets in. Dana White said after UFC 300 that he was worried about the company facing legal action, but he apparently can rest easy. 15 Stanley Cup playoff berths have been clinched. The final NHL team can get in Tuesday. Here's where the races stand. A ticket to the Masters, known as a badge, is one of the most elusive items in all of sports. But those who are lucky enough to procure one know that it provides more than just access to one of golf's most hallowed grounds, it is also an invitation to leave the troubles of the world behind.